And if you start to treat your husband like you are his mother, mm -hmm. you will start to lose or hurt the relationship. Yeah. He doesn't need another mother. He needs a wife. Mm -hmm. He needs a helpmate. He needs a partner. He needs a companion. You know, what I'm finding, and this is not across the board, but there are many women who've just, they just have never really been around a manly man. Yeah. They just haven't had a lot of men in their life. And when the man is just being a man, it's almost like he's being demonized just for who God's made him to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think your ministry has always been to teach women really how to serve their man yeah. and honor their man. And for me, my ministry has always been to teach men how to love their wives like Christ got on a cross. That's how mm -hmm. I should serve you and honor you mm -hmm. and lift you up. Mm -hmm. And at that crossroads is where healthy marriages yeah. are found. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. We are so pumped to have you here for this is actually season number two, y'all, right. for doing life season with Ken and two. Tabitha, and we are well on our way. Of course, next week is going to be Valentine's Day, mm -hmm. and so we kind of wanted to drop something for our couples Aww. today, and today we're going to talk about not sweating the small stuff. Okay. Because if you start sweating the small stuff and you're married, it's probably going to mess up your Valentine's Shh. Day and mess up your marriage, and Come we don't on. want that to happen. And so we're pumped to have you guys wherever you are, whoever you are. We don't mm. believe you found us by accident. We believe it's God's doing. Welcome to Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. Yes, welcome. We're so glad to just do life with you. Yeah. Know that we're praying for you and just believing for God's best to happen in your life. Thinking of best, we want to help your marriage get better. If you are a married person, you're watching on YouTube, throw some hands up and say, I'm married. You're talking to me. If you're a person who is maybe in a marriage that you just want it to, it to be improved. You just want it to get better. I got great news for you. We have now officially launched our Better Marriage Boot Camp. And, you know, boot camps are kind of like our personality. Tabitha, she used to be in the ROTC, and she went away to a boot camp. And um, we could have called it a master class or something like that, but we want to help you get your marriage in mm -hmm. shape. The goal of this boot camp is to move bad marriages to good marriages. Those of you all who have a good marriage to a great marriage. And those of you all who have a great marriage, we want to help it get better and to be an out-of-this-world mar uh, marriage. Amen. We take our 24-plus years of marriage ups and downs, and we've put it into a 90-day boot camp that we are calling the Better Marriage Boot Camp. If you are interested with um, whipping your marriage into shape, jump over to KenAndTabitha.com, or you can check it out in the link in our show notes. And uh, this is what we say, that when you get better, the marriage will get better. Amen. Are you ready for today's segment, sweetheart? I am ready. Don't sweat what? The small the stuff. The small stuff. Um, how, how do you feel that I do with that? How do you feel Ooh. I do at not sweating the small stuff? Um, Tell the people. I would say it's probably situational, but for the most <clears throat> part, you don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're more of a big picture kind of guy. Okay. But you do like details. I wasn't sure what you were going to say, but now that you say it, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I just don't sweat the small stuff a lot. Eh, I mean, if you compare it to me, <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Let's just, let's just put it all on the table today. I mean, not that we, I want to sweat the small stuff, uh, but I tend to notice the small stuff okay. more than you. Uh, tell on yourself a little bit. Why is that? Um, so you sweat the small stuff? It could be, yeah. I mean, I don't... I will. I intentionally don't sweat the small stuff. I, I would agree. But I do have a propensity to go down that, that trail of yeah. sweating the small stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I know that about myself. Uh -huh. And so I've, you know, I kind of, most mean, of the time I won't anymore, but there's some things you know that I go, that I, I, I do. I got your back on this, baby. Come on, baby. You don't really sweat the small stuff like you might think that mm -hmm. you do. Um, when I think of somebody sweating the small stuff, it's almost like, they're married to somebody, and that person's always frustrated. They're always annoyed, and it's not big things. You know, yeah. when people say they're filing for divorce, and they say it's because of unreconcilable differences, yeah. that's code word that we couldn't get along. Mm. And so every relationship has a stage. You have the infatuation stage, and then you got the fight for power stage, mm -hmm. and then you got the, mat the maturity. And most divorces happen in the fight for power stage where it's just like my way versus your way. Mm -hmm. And that's the stage when small things get blown up into big things. Yeah. And we just wanted to help somebody. Come on, somebody. We make a mountain not, out of a molehill. Yeah, not to sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. When I think about me, do I sweat the small, small stuff? I think in certain areas of my life I do. Yeah. Like there's some things in my church life 
that I sweat small things like I didn't like that, that the sound didn't sound right or that drum beat wasn't right or I didn't like the songs that you sang. Mm-hmm. And what I've learned over, my God, well, I'm going into 17 years of ministry um, in April. What I've learned is that some of those small things, it doesn't move the needle at all. Right. Like people still going to get saved. They didn't hear that that track messed up. They didn't hear that, that they don't even know that light wasn't wrong. People still going to get saved mm-hmm. and healed. And so I want to be like that in every area of yeah. my life. And so when I think of you, do you sweat the small stuff? Um, I think you overlook a lot, mm-hmm. but I do think that there's probably things that happen in the house. And that's probably what you're talking oh, about. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're talking? It's, so- it's all uh-huh. motherhood, oh, okay. you know, honestly. Uh-huh. And, you know, a little bit, I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Our oldest daughter is 18 years old. Uh-huh. We've been married for almost 25 years. So a lot of the small things, I've really renewed my mind, yeah. you know, and I've gotten over them. Uh-huh. So I'm left now with, you know, some stuff that it's just like new stuff can pop up. And it's like, hey, uh-huh. OK, girl, remember, don't sweat the small stuff. It, it's <laughs> not there's a bigger picture right. here, you know. Do you know what I want to ask you, though? Like. Um, what are some of the small stuff Mm -hmm. that you used to sweat more back in the day that you don't sweat as much now? Okay. Um, there's, there's wifely things and there's motherly things. So wifely things would be, um, I'm infamous for saying this about you was that you would leave your socks in the bed. Okay. This is a small thing, Uh but it just, it just irritated me that Uh you would leave your socks in the bed. Okay. Um, I don't care anymore. I don't Praise care. God. It's, it's, it doesn't There's matter. probably a sock in the bed right now. Yeah, that sock loves you, and too. I don't. I, I sock, still don't like the that sock. That sock wants to spend no, the night I, with you. No, I don't like the sock. <laughs> but I don't care. It's there. You're not going to hear me say anything about it. Okay. That's one. Um, I think um, I used to have little things like, you know, where you put your shoes. I, got all, I had all these rules. Like, I like things super clean and uh-huh. put the dishes on this side of the sink, not that side of the sink. Please rinse it off and put it in the dishwasher like I this. I see that that's still there though a little bit, but uh, it's okay. Yeah, You're but just trying not, to create order, uh, take care of the family. Uh-huh. Not like it should be. Like it uh, used to be. Like it used to be. Uh-huh. Um, so little things like that. I think, you know, when it comes to like the kids, uh-huh. um, I would, oh my gosh, I just, if they would just do what I said, uh-huh. you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Some of the small things is like, um, you know, brush your teeth. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Wash your face. Take a shower. That may small um, your things. Your clothes are just wrinkled. Things that everybody should do. I but, don't know. <laughs> I mean, they are uh-huh. things, but um, as a mom, what I've discovered is that I mean, well, basically, you can just bark all the time. Yeah, you can bark all the time, and I've I've lost the connection with my child because <laughs> wow. when they come to me, I'm no longer hugging them. I'm always complaining about your face is dirty, you stink, your your clothes are dirty, your shoes, and like all like it's sometimes like I have to just be like, this child stinks. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they need to take a shower. Oh but God, I'm, I'm going to, I, I just media. ignore it. Like, okay, right. I love you. I'm going to kiss you. I'm going to hug you. Go ahead and eat dinner. But then after dinner, I'll be like, Ooh. okay, baby, it's time to take a shower. You might want to write that down because love ignores. Yeah. There are some things yeah. that in the, in the household that you just have to it's ignore. It's not worth my relationship. It's just not worth the relationship. Yeah. Okay. Man, that's so good. So I think that this is a thing, you know, and we talk to couples everywhere. That's just what we do. I love married people. Mm -hmm. I love people in relationships. I think this is one that people really struggle with. Why do you think people struggle with sweating the small stuff? Mm -hmm. There's things that, you know, can trigger us to be angry. Uh Um, I think there's control issues. And that issues. might be the biggest thing for me to where I'm trying to run my household. Right. Um, I got <laughs> goals. <laughs> you know, we got to be here at this time. You got to mm-hmm. do this. I want my kids to make A's in school. I want yeah. my husband to be happy when like I got mm. meals to cook. I got like all of this stuff to do. And if it's the small things, uh-huh. you know, that affect the bigger picture. And I'm right. like, oh, my gosh, the house is a wreck now. Right. It, I yeah. think it's the, they say sometimes the little foxes that spoil, spoil the, the vine. vine. It's just, you, you feel like that. So yeah. it's almost like the last well, straw. Well, now that you mention it, yesterday you were a tad testy. Was I? <laughs> what did I do yesterday? Testy. Remember you were stressed out a little bit with the kids and different things and you were stressed out? 
I didn't get none last night. You just, everybody's <laughs> just going to bed. It's, it's just a little, it's a little, uh, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little tension in the atmosphere. I right do. Now. Oh, okay. Just a little so, but, tension. But I didn't do anything. No, Did I do something? No, you ain't do nothing. But I said, yeah. But I told you I was. I think uh -huh. I realized I was stressed. Right. I said, baby, I think I'm stressed. Yeah. Because I didn't realize it. I just knew I was frustrated. But that's what I want to pull out. You first have to realize mm -hmm. it because you cannot overcome something that you don't realize. Yeah. And so you realized, hey, I'm stressed. Hey, I'm tense. Okay, let me talk about this yes. and let us kind of work this thing out. Um, so same as it is when it comes to small stuff, if you sweat the small stuff, you first got to say, you know what? Yeah. I am sweating too much of the small stuff. But I like what you said about people. I think control is a big one mm -hmm. for people. So why do they s sweat the small stuff? Um, some people are just too fretful. They're too touchy. Mm -hmm. And then everything gets on their nerves. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're missing the joy of life. They're missing the lightheartedness. They're missing yeah. the fun. Um, tell me if I'm wrong. I just feel like wives should bring a level of fun mm -hmm. and joy and lightheartedness into the mm -hmm. home. Yeah. And I'm, I don't mean just wives. I know the husband should as well. Yeah, that's all I was going to say. Yeah, I think as well. husbands yeah. bring some joy into <laughs> the home I just as well. Be, you know, and people don't like when I say that kind of stuff, but I just feel like it's almost like, well, you know, I know we both have a responsibility. Yes. But when I think of you, like, all right, so let's say that I got a lot on my plate. The role of if a mother. If you have a lot on your plate and I got a lot on my plate, that's when stuff really gets bad. Right. I can have a light on my plate, but when you're like, hey, baby, what you need, it's going to be okay, and prophesying over the atmosphere, stuff's still good at home. Right. But it's just, now I'm saying, like, it could be vice versa. I don't know. Just for our house setup. Right. You are the temperature setter, yeah. so to say. And we've es <clears throat> we've defined those roles in <laughs> our marriage, meaning that if you're running like at top speed, uh -huh. more than likely we both can't run at top speed at the same time when it comes to our professional lives. Or our professional lives. Okay. You're running because top speed Because spiritually, we there. I'm yeah. here with you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You're not going to outgrow me spiritually, baby. I'm coming with you. Okay. Right. Emotionally, mentally, right. you know, soulishly, like we are going to grow at the same pace right. and inten be intentional with that. Yeah. But when it comes to like in our professional lives, uh -huh. you can't run around the world preaching and teaching all the time and me running around preaching and teaching. Who's going, who's at home with the kids? Right. Who's making sure that there's fun we and We are laughter? giving y'all what's been in our kitchen this week. Oh my week. goodness. We've just made decisions about reducing her travel time mm -hmm. so that she could run faster at home. Mm -hmm. And I guess for people that are listening, it's okay to know what you need in different seasons. Yes. And when stuff is chaotic, okay, we are a team. Yeah. So it's not like I'm going to go after my dream and you're going to help me. No, we're going after our dream. Absolutely. And in this season, what do we need to mm -hmm. be a healthy family? But it's good to recognize, recognize where you it. are. Yeah. And so what I was doing yesterday mm -hmm. was recognizing like, mm -hmm. oh, snap, I think I'm stressed. <laughs> and I'm stressed. And it was a lot of little things yeah. that, and I told you last night, night I don't I think I didn't realize that I was stressed because it's like this little like this is whatever this little thing here we'll fix it this right. little thing here I have faith we'll fix it this little thing right. oh, we'll get it together it's, right. it's all good but it's when those all those little things come together it's right. just like ooh, and then it right. gets a little weighty right but one of us you know has to bring joy into the home and and um well let me kind of retract my last statement mm -hmm. both of us have to bring joy. both into of us the home. have to do it but if um, I guess if you want to be the hero in the home, you can be the one that brings yeah, the joy, yeah. whether you're a man or a woman, husband or wife, you can bring the one to bring the joy into mm -hmm. the home. But somebody needs to bring somebody the lightheartedness. Yeah. Somebody needs to bring the party. Somebody needs to bring the celebration. Somebody needs to bring the crazy music. Somebody needs to, you know, mm -hmm. somebody has to do that. I think as so. a mother, that role of a mother yeah. and that nurturing role that we play, uh -huh. that traditional mothering role, um, I think that's why you said that statement. Yeah. Because as a mom, it is, you know, it's stressful taking care of kids it is and um if we don't laugh about it yeah. <laughs> if we don't throw on some music and dance about it and have a good time we are going to be stressed i would and if say the wife is not happy mm -hmm. i would say taking care of the kids is more difficult than going away to work in corporate America, in the business world. And I'm saying that as a stone cold businessman who has a business degree that founded my first company back in 1998 or 99. Um, but what I see uh, stay at home moms do or people who are taking care of the kids, in my estimation, is just as difficult, if not more difficult. Mm -hmm. And let me just leave it at that. <laughs> Go ahead, baby. So when it comes to don't sweat the small stuff, I think some people are hard to live with. Mm -hmm. Okay? They just don't know how to live closely with another person. 
And if that's you, we want to help you locate where you are and get some tools. Mm -hmm. There are people, they just don't know how to live with a man. There's women, they just don't know how to live with a man. There's men that just don't know how to treat a woman. We want to help you live together successfully. Okay. Yeah. Um, Something on that? I was going to say, I mean, especially, you know, you've, before you get married or, you know, if you're single, especially in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you've become accustomed uh-huh. to a certain lifestyle. Right. You you know, you come home, everything's where you left it. Now, <laughs> when, you're if you, when you're single. Now, the second you get married, <laughs> you come home. You can't find a thing. You don't know. they. And I'm territorial. Yeah. You know, like at work, like if I left my pencil here on my desk, I want to come back and my pencil still be there. That ain't Please don't take my yeah, pencil. Yeah, not if you married you, and Yeah, you like that, you know. Yeah. And so it can be difficult. Right. Um, but we just have to, I don't know, switch our focus. and. Yeah, it's called it's, doing life with people. It's doing life with people. I think some people who sweat the small stuff, some people are just too easily annoyed. Mm-hmm. And I know they're listening right now. And it's it's hard to live with a Debbie Downer. And it's hard to live with a negative Nancy. And let me give a, a guy name. It's hard to live with a fault-finding Fabian. I made that up. Ah. Thank you very much. All right? And there are skills that you need to learn to not be so negative. Mm-hmm. Like the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm-hmm. You can look at your husband and rip him down. You can look at each other and just rip each other in your mind. And if you are allowing your thoughts to always go there, your actions will soon follow. Mm. And so we just need to know how not to sweat the small stuff. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Some people don't know how not to make a mountain out of a molehill. They just get too worked up about small things, dishes, grass. They just get too worked up about socks in the bed. And we got to learn not to make a mountain out of a molehill. Um, First Peter chapter four and eight says this above all, listen, love each other deeply. Why? Because love covers a multitude of sin. That scripture is so dope because love doesn't expose. Mm -hmm. Love always covers. Mm -hmm. Now we live in a a social media generation and I see people Mm -hmm. wanting to expose. We're going to expose this Mm -hmm. preacher. We're going to expose this pastor. We're going to expose other people. But my Bible says that love covers covers. Mm. It covers. And I'm not saying that it never exposes. I do believe that God will expose your sin, but he doesn't do it until it's the last thing. My God, he gives us 25,000 chances to repent and get it right. The last thing that he wants to do as a loving father is expose you, but he will expose you with love in his heart to Mm. cause you to repent. But he gives you so many chances not to be exposed because love covers. Love does not expose. Man, I know people that's been close to me that has fallen into sin. I don't want anybody to know because love covers. Think about it for a second. How many of us have messed up in our past? Thank God that Jesus covered who I used to be. Mm -hmm. When I was a Christian atheist and I was unfaithful and I was trying to rob and steal and do all these things, Jesus covered all those things because that's what love does. Yeah. Love covers sin. It's so good. I think that, you know, um, sometimes, and I'll speak to my, for myself, there were um, maybe TV shows that I would watch on TV that might be like gossip shows where they would say celebrity news or, you know, standing in line at the grocery store and there's magazines and on the cover of the magazines, it's just like these gossiping, like rumor type of things yeah. that'll say such and such exposed. <laughs> it's like this trigger word and you want to, de- you know, it's almost like your, it, your ears like, are like, ooh, ooh what? what was that? What's oh, going me... on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have learned, I t- and it's been, I don't know, a couple of years now, but I turned it off. Okay, I'm not watching that show anymore. Uh-huh. I'm not paying attention to this reel anymore. Uh-huh. I'm not going to look at these magazines anymore because I felt like I was creating this thirst, this desire, this hunger for dirty information, right. for bad things about people, almost like being enticed with bad news. Right. You know what I mean? Like you can turn on the news and it's just like such and such got shot and such and such went to jail. And, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, right. please stop telling me this. Right. But if we're not careful, uh-huh. we can bring those things mm-hmm. into our relationships. Right. And then that's what the fault finding is about. Right. And that's what the exposing is about. It's yeah. just like, okay, throw all of that in the trash. Yeah. 
Yeah. First Peter chapter four, verse eight, again, it says above all, mm -hmm. love each other deeply. Mm -hmm. That means that I don't want my love for my wife to be on the surface. I want to get to the place where I love you deeply. Yeah. I don't want our love to be, we have to love each other deeply. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on and says, because love covers, covers, that's what we've been talking about, a multitude, not, not like a few, but like a whole bunch of sin. Yeah. And when we talk about sin, let's not just talk about sin, like missing the mark, like ungodly sin. Love covers your weaknesses. Yeah. Love covers your shortcomings. Your mistakes. Love covers your idiosyncrasies. Yeah. Love covers your quirkiness and yeah. your personality. Because I think those are the small things. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the infatuation stage, it's like you can do no wrong. But then in the fight for power stage, you can do no right. Mm -hmm. And we are allowing Satan in our flesh to make small things seem so big. Mm -hmm. But love covers all of that, man. Amen. Love covers all of that. Mm -hmm. We see it with our children. You know, Absolutely. Our children can do stuff and we just cover them. We just see their potential. We see who they can become. We see their calling. And don't you dare say and anything. If you say negative anything about, about I will choke child. you out outside. Listen, I just Rick said, Flair. Woo! I will give it to you. Drop kick you outside. I'm don't, telling you. Uh -huh. I want to be like that. That's how I am with my husband. Right. That's how I am with you. Come on, like, you please, drop kick somebody please. for me, baby. I don't care if you're Whoever relationship. That's what I want to see. I don't care who you are. I want to see you just run me. through the lobby of the church and just drop kick somebody. Yeah. <laughs> that I won't will go do viral. it in the natural. I okay. would if I had to. Yeah. But spiritually, yeah. I will lay the smack down. And what does that mean? I, I'm just going to pray for you. <laughs> I'm going to cover you in love. <laughs> I'm going to sow the do good seed. Right, I mean, right, I will right, do anything right, for you. Like, come right, on, you know. Right. But anyway. Here's a few things that we've learned over 24 years of marriage. Um, when it comes to don't sweat the small stuff, we've learned that life is too short to sweat the small stuff. Absolutely. You know, I think at it's, the end of our lives, you know, you hear stories about people when, when they're dying and uh -huh. we have goals of like where we want to be at the end of our life. Right. But, you know, I think even now I'm not at the end of my life. Uh -huh. When I look back to the to the past, yeah. I remember and cherish the good things. Uh -huh. I don't remember how the dishes were dirty or the plant fell over and broke and we had to clean it up or we got a flat tire or I remember our all of those day. things have happened within the last 30 <laughs> years. <But go> ahead. <laughs> I remember our wedding day. Uh -huh. I remember Christmases and New Year's Eve. Yeah. I remember dates that we went on. I remember right. when our children were born. Right. You know, I remember these important days. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of people mm, so that will come to the end of their lives or stand before Jesus mm -hmm. and they will be. Um, a lot of people who have gotten divorced over mm -hmm. irreconcilable differences yeah. when they're not even going to remember why. Yeah. They're not going to know what it was, but they'll remember their wedding day, but they won't remember the reasons why they got the small divorced. Stuff. Yeah. And I think for those of us who are, no condemnation if you have to been divorced, but for those of us who are still married, yeah. let's not sweat the small stuff. We're Come not on. even going to remember it. We've also learned it's really not that serious. Mm -hmm. You know, these are just little principles. Like sometimes we make things serious and it's really not that serious yeah i remember back in the day as a young pastor it was all about this is warfare <laughs> and we gotta beat the taking devil. over for we the gotta kingdom. take over the city and touch the city you ain't touching no city you're gonna lock arms with other pastors and preachers who are just as anointed yeah. as you and you're gonna do what god's called us to do to the best you're of our ability fight this entire battle on your own it's like man Get a get a get a blow pop and get on a jet ski and just sit on the beach and get a tan. Like it's not that serious. I mean, yeah. it is serious. I understand there's yeah. devils and demons and these are the last days and you know, man, people can be so serious they lose their joy. But when it comes to being married, mm -hmm. like some of the small stuff, it's just not that yeah. serious. We've also learned that nobody wants to live with a Debbie Downer or mm -hmm. fault finding Fabian. We just don't want to. We don't want it. Yeah. You, you, you have anything you want to share about that? Yeah, I'm reminded of a scripture that says that it's better to stay on the rooftop than to live in a house with a nagging woman. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we can. I wonder why that scripture just says that it's the woman that's nagging. Um, it's probably, I mean, I think no doubt a man can nag as well. Is that like a woman's gift of the spirit? Um, well, it's the, tr the, the traditional roles. <laughs> Don't get in purpose. trouble. I know because people are going to come at me. Just ignore him. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got playing, him. I'm just playing, okay? y'all. Don't, Don't worry about him. I got him. him. But okay. I say in the Bible, does say that. It, it Why does, does it say, say about a woman? It don't say that about a man. <laughs> Why? I mean, just, I, I thought you might have extended revelation on it. 
I'm tempted to go and dig up all the stuff that it says about a man, that. but I, we'll I'm not going to do that, that. okay? Because okay. that's that's not love. Yeah. But what I will say is that the traditional role of a woman, being the wife and the mother, being the homemaker, yeah. it's easy to nag. It's easy to, okay, these are the rules of the house. Mm -hmm. Follow them. Pick right. up your stuff. Pick mm -hmm. up your shoes. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, get your, get your stuff. Get it together. Yeah. It's just easy. Like, yeah. please take out the trash, dude. I asked you 100 years ago to take out the trash. Please do it. <laughs> like... Right, right, right. I will say this for most men, and you know, I always love, I love to speak to women like as daughters. Mm -hmm. I love to speak to them as daughters and sisters. Amen. Um, but your man does not need another uh, another mother. True. And if you start to treat your husband like you are his mother, mm -hmm. you will start to lose or hurt the relationship. Yeah. He doesn't need another mother. He needs a wife. Mm -hmm. He needs a helpmate. He needs a partner. He needs a companion, you know, and... Um, I know it's vice versa and other things, but I think it's important mm -hmm. for women sometimes because what I'm finding, and this is not across the board, but there are many women who've just, they just have never really been around a manly man. Yeah. They just haven't had a lot of men in their life. And when the man is just being a man, it's almost like he's being demonized just for who God's made him to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think your ministry has always been to teach women really how to serve their man yeah. and honor their man. And for me, my ministry has always been to teach men how to love their wives like Christ got on a cross. That's how mm -hmm. I should serve you and honor you mm -hmm. and lift you up. Mm -hmm. And at that crossroads is where healthy marriages yeah. are found. And I think, you know, I think I want to point out the difference between a mother and a wife because <laughs> I think some people are mothering their their husbands and yeah. don't even know it. Yeah. So a mother will come in and kind of um, coddle, uh -huh. nourish, nurture in a way that is hovering, that uh -huh. I'm going to keep you safe. Uh -huh. I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to, this is from a mother to a child. Uh -huh. I am in authority over you. Uh -huh. I tell you what to do. You respect, you know, all that's a mother. Right. A wife comes beside. Yeah. A wife comes under and supports the up. man. Right. Yeah, um, a wife holds him up. Mm -hmm. A wife um, respects and honors. A wife says, what is it that's on the inside of your heart? Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me that. Okay, that's what we're going to set and believe for our family. Okay. I'm going to pray for you in this way. A yeah. wife nurtures, but not as like a mother would nurture. A wife nurtures in a a wonderful way that we have the privilege to nurture and nurture to touch me, and to, you know, all of those things. But that's the, the difference between like a mother and a uh -huh. wife. You know what I mean? I hear the word incubation. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of wives don't know how to incubate. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about that for yeah. a minute? And so, you know, just like in, um, we incubate a baby, uh -huh. okay? There's a seed that you have uh -huh. on the inside of you. You plant that seed on the inside of me and I grow it. Yeah. I grow it into a full grown, beautiful, live, living baby, and I give birth to it. And mm -hmm. now it's manifested in this world. So God has given us and our family mm -hmm. through you. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, sometimes me too, but I'm just talking about the man right now. Mm -hmm. But God has given you dreams mm -hmm. on the inside of you. Yeah. And those dreams, mm -hmm. when you speak them in mm -hmm. seed form, in forms of words to me, mm -hmm. I take those dreams, mm -hmm. I take those seeds, mm -hmm. and I take it on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. I I nurture it. You I remind grow it. me of I it. I pray about you it. You push me towards I take it. it. God. You prophesy over yes. me concerning it. Until that thing grows you and incubate develops, it. we right. incubate it. Uh -huh. And then we can now, you know, I don't think that I'm not here, just like you're with me in the labor room, uh -huh. pushing that thing out. Uh -huh. Like we can push it out together. together. It's not just yours, but uh -huh. this is ours together. Yeah. Your dreams are my dreams. Right. My dreams are your dreams. Yeah. And so we push this out. Together. And we have a different part to play in the family yes. dynamic. And I'm not saying that our dynamic is everybody's dynamic, right. but I think the principles remain. That there's just something about the woman that has the ability to incubate. Absolutely. And so the woman can actually abort the, the man's vision mm -hmm. or she can help it. Mm -hmm. She can incubate it and remind him of it. Baby, you said we was going to be debt free in the next three years. I'm here to support you. Whatever you need, I can start shopping at whatever grocery store I need to. Just want to remind you what you said. I'm mm -hmm. here to support you. Mm -hmm. She's not tearing him down. She's always building him up. Yes. She's not ridiculing him. She's not sweating the small stuff. So it's just amazing because when I think of incubation, I think the difference between mothering and wives is a completely different posture. Like you said, it's not a hovering over, it's 
a coming beside to push you up because whenever you push me, mm -hmm. you push yourself. And then I turn around and I want to serve you and I'm getting low and I'm pushing you up. And when I push you up, I push myself up. And I just feel like that that's healthy marriages are found in the yes. crossroads of all those principles right yes. there. All those principles. You dropping dimes today, <laughs> girl. Tell us more. Tell us. We've also learned over the years we are to let kindness rule our tongue. Yes. And, um, you know, you're a super kind person. Mm -hmm. You're a super nice person. And I feel like you you you, you do well at that. Mm -hmm. Kindness. Mm -hmm. um, any Anything on that when it comes to not sweating the small stuff? Let um, kindness rule mm -hmm. your tongue. I will say that I think a lot of um, people are not kind, men and women, because they don't want their kindness to be mistaken for weakness. Okay. And um, huh. I think, um, you know, I find this out even with our children. Like, I'm very kind to our children. Uh -huh. But every once in a while, like this morning, for example, uh -huh. I had to, not that I wasn't kind, yeah. but I had to, like, yeah, I had to get. Some I had to be like, too. okay, first of all, you're talking to your mother, yeah, why, so put some you, respect who, who on who it. Second to? of all, I'm not dumb. Don't treat me like that. Yeah. So I had to like, kind of. I don't yeah. know what it's called. Uh -huh. Use my authority. I had to like kind of step to them a little bit mm -hmm. to say, you know, okay, whatever, and say, hey, just because I'm nice to you and uh -huh. I give you, you know, I, I'm your parent. I'm supposed to do that, and I love up on you. I'm always kind. I'm always cheering you on. Don't think that I won't take you out. Right, right. <laughs> I brought you in this world. I'll take you. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, but. And I'm, th I'm reminded of that right now because I think as husband and wife, sometimes, you know, we can, you uh -huh. know, think, well, I'm not going to be kind uh -huh. or I'm not going to be, you know, yeah. they just don't want to be mistaken for being weak yeah. or don't want to be taken advantage of. Right. But according to scripture, uh -huh. that's not the case. Right. That when you are kind um, and when you love people, yeah. when you turn the other cheek, uh -huh. when you do things like that, now you have God on your side. Yeah. You're not just being kind, but you are working the word. And when you work the word, it works for you. I don't know. I just feel like if we could just set ourselves to be super kind, it would change our marriages. Yeah. It would just make it better. If instead of getting upset, frustrated, annoyed, angry, whatever you want to call it, of small stuff, just be kind. Yeah. Just be kind and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so lastly, I think we've also learned that we can all be CEOs. Mm -hmm. I call it, C uh, I'm, I'm the CEO, the chief encouragement officer. I'm the CEO at church. That's what I want to be. I'm the CEO in my family. Um, I want to be the chief encouragement officer. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's powerful when people set themselves to be CEOs that you can be the chief encouragement officer. Yes. And so... Here's the question that I would like to ask our viewers. Mm -hmm. Would you want to live with you? Mm. That's what I would ask everybody who's watching and listening. Would mm. you want to live with you? If we were a fly on the wall of your attitude, posture, disposition at home, would you mm -hmm. really want to live with you? Wow. And I want to be the kind of person that if you were watching my life, not this on TV podcast life, but home when no cameras are there, nobody's around. I want to exemplify a life that other people would say, I want to behave like that as mm -hmm. a husband. I want to be like that as a father. Yeah. I want to be th those characteristics. There are the characteristics of Jesus and that's how I want to be. And so I'm not perfect at it, but that's what I'm working for. That's and really I want to take like thousands of men along with mm -hmm. me to be those stable mm -hmm. character driven, principle driven visionaries that are men of God that lead their house in spiritual things with great vision until it's all done and we're before Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I think that's a great perspective. Uh -huh. I've said over the years that um, I've joked and I've joked and said that, you know, I don't just try not to take myself too seriously and uh -huh. to give everyone else the same outs and same grace that I would give myself. Right. And so sometimes we bark at everyone else and right. we're so annoyed by everyone else in the house, whether spouse or kids. And we forget that it's like the man who has a splinter in his, a log in his eye that points to the splinter in his brothers. Right. So I've never wanted to be that person. And right. I'll jokingly say, I get on my own nerves sometimes. <laughs> like, girl, just shut up. Do you hear yourself? Like, well, come on. Principle, girl. Um, yeah. But it's just, and I've always, you know, tried to live by those principles. <laughs> but like you said, I don't think I've ever had that frame, that that word mm -hmm. um, to say what I want to live 
with myself. Yeah. And I think that's a goal would to Would you want to live with you? Yeah. On like, a scale of one to ten, ten being, oh, yeah, I would love that. Yeah. I don't know. What kind of atmosphere do you create yeah. in the home? Yeah. And I don't know. I feel like even if somebody's checking us out and they're like, I admit I'm horrible. Mm-hmm. I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed. It's mm-hmm. always that time of the month, so to say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there are tools. There's mm-hmm. tools. Nobody's perfect. You don't have to, you know, down on yourself. Just let's learn some new mm-hmm. tools to get some new results. Absolutely. You know, you know, there's a scripture that comes to me in 1 Corinthians 13, um, verse number 3, um, 13, verse number 4 through 10. And this is what we call like the love chapter. And so if you want to do any Devo time, check out 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 10. Mm. Let's read it in different translations. Today we're going to look at the NIV. It says, and it defines love. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love doesn't delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, Mm. always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Whether they be prophecies, they will cease. Whether they be tongues, they will be stilled. Whether there is knowledge, it shall pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. And so this is kind of, I guess we didn't have to read all the way to verse 10. I could have just stopped where it says love never fails. Yeah. But I just feel like if we get this in our heart, it changes the game. Mm-hmm. A marriage can go from a two to a six overnight, a six to a nine overnight. If we really understood charity, which is the agape love of God being translated love in this translation what sticks out to you from first corinthians 13 because when it comes don't sweat the small stuff it's because my love is covering all those small stuff mm-hmm. the small stuff is there it's in every home it's in every marriage it's it's easy it's easy to come in and t- you know i lead an organization to say well i don't like this and i don't like that i don't like this and i don't like that i don't want my staff to like oh here he come right here he come i'm sure he gonna point out the negative like everybody sees the negative, okay? And there's a way that you can unfold those things, family meetings. Yeah. There's a way that you can get everything better, but you want to create an atmosphere of love and encouragement mm-hmm. and joy and celebration and just there's something anointed about the love chapter. Anything sticks out to you on that? Um, oh man, there's there's so much. I will say that I, the the title that we're talking about today don't is small. don't sweat the small stuff, meaning don't, D, D, don't, do not. Right. And in the definition of love, it says love is patient, love is kind. And right. then it goes into what love is not. Right. Love does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, does not dishonor, yeah. is not. So, so it's like it, in order for God to show us what love is, uh-huh. he also had to tell us what love is not. Yeah. And love is not sweating the small stuff. And so I think it sometimes you it have is. to pay attention yeah. to what you shouldn't do so you will know what to you do. should do. Yeah. I love it because it actually defines love. Like love is patient. Yeah. Like quit like needing things to happen overnight, like with your kids and your spouse. Give like slow down. Space. Give them space. They're trying their Give best. Them grace. They got a life. They got their own problems. Love is kind. Yeah. Like you are naturally a kinder person than yeah. me. Kindness is always something that I'm developing, but I'm never going to be at your level of kindness. The scripture my my says, voice doesn't even sound as kind as yours. <laughs> my look, like I look at myself, I'm, like, my eyes, they don't <laughs> seem as, like your cheekbones and your smile, everything about you is kinder than me. But God knows my heart. <laughs> I want to be kind. I really do. Well, here's the thing. But we can all grow in the it. The scripture says that let kindness be the law uh-huh. of your tongue. So that means that kindness is a law uh-huh. that I've put on my tongue. Uh-huh. So it's like there is, if something comes out of your mouth uh-huh. that is not kind, uh-huh. well, the law is that you don't say it, right. that you don't, you know, you, you don't say it. So it's kind of like, mm-hmm. it, it's a law. It's yeah. God help me <laughs> to allow kindness to be the law of my tongue. Yeah. I love it. It's a law. Okay. Love doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. Love is not proud. Um, I like that one because it's the opposite of humility. Mm -hmm. Love doesn't dishonor others. And I think when you be little people and you are just too petty and it's just, you just sweat the small stuff, you actually are just dishonoring them. Mm 
Yeah. Love is not self-seeking. That means it's not selfish. And so I think one of the reasons that people sweat the small stuff is because it's about what you like. Mm -hmm. It's about what's annoying you. It's about what's getting on your nerves. Yeah. You're not even thinking about the other person. That the very fact that you get your, the very fact that you are on your last nerve is getting on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sweat the small stuff. It's the last straw. Yeah. Well, that gets on my nerves, too, because yeah. it's the last, last straw. straw. Why is everything the last straw? Come on, man. Love is not easily angered. So to me, that means, like, that doesn't matter. Remember when we said love ignores a lot? Mm -hmm. And love keeps no records of wrong. Yeah. I don't have all of these records, and you did this, and you didn't say that, and you didn't pick this Ooh. up, and you didn't do that. So what I'm saying today is could it be that we need to develop the fruit of love? Mm. We need to read real books on love. Mm -hmm. That we need to ask God to help us pour his love, Romans 5, 5, into our heart by the Holy Spirit. Ooh. And when you get filled up with love, you will become blinder to some of the small stuff. We were blinded by love in the first place. Blinded by love. We I just love need to show. become blind by love again. We need to be blind by mm -hmm. love again. Let me declare the spirit of 1 Corinthians over you guys. This is in the Message Bible. Listen to this. Same passage, Message mm -hmm. Bible. Mm -hmm. Love never gives up. Love never cares more for others than for self. Or love cares more for others than for <laughs> self. <laughs> That's the problem. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Doesn't have a swelled head. Doesn't force itself on others. Isn't always me first. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep more score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. It puts up with anything. It trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but it always keeps going to the end mm. because love never dies. Woo! Wow. We declare that spirit of love over Amen. you. And I believe that when it's in your heart and in your home, the, the, the small stuff that you've been sweating, um, you won't sweat no more. All right. We're out of time for today, but we hope that you enjoyed today's podcast. If you're watching YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first to get the content when it's released. We drop a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. If you are free on 3 p.m., there's a whole bunch of people tuning in live. If not, of course, you can catch the playback. We believe that caring is sharing and sharing is caring. One of the best things you can do with our podcast is simply pay it forward. There are married people around the world that is in need of this content. I'm happy to announce that now we are on TV here on the Super Channel in Orlando, and we're also on TV in Russia. And what are we doing? We're helping marriages in Russia mm. and the Ukraine. If you are in Russia or the Ukraine, please get on social media, jump on, just let us know who you are and how this content is blessing you all around the world. Amen. If it's been really good to you, make sure that you leave us a positive review because those things really bless us as well. We've got a new product out for you guys. We hope that you get it. We want to help your marriage be better, so grab hold of the Better Marriage Boot Camp. And until next Thursday, we got a new one coming for you next Thursday. You're going to want to make sure that you're here for next Thursday because we're going all the way up on that one, all right? Hey, we love y'all, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.